on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits, a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is episode six of the Beat on Bits podcast. Today I have with me Kalen. Uh, he's my coworker. Uh, let's not say exactly where we work, just in case <laughs> <laughs> we say anything us. stupid. Yeah. Uh, so this is Kalen. Uh, if if you want to tell us, a, like I don't know, some basic info, what kind of stuff do you do? What yeah. kind of stuff are you interested in? Well, I, actually, I was hoping that you were gonna say say hi, Kalen, because I was watching your previous ones. Oh, yeah. I messed up this time. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll do that again. Okay. Hey, everyone. This is Kalen. Say hi, Kalen. Hi, Kalen. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep the tradition, just like the the previous podcasts. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised you even like listen to them all. <laughs> well, I mean, dude, I gotta I gotta be a fan. I gotta know what I'm getting myself into. I feel so touched. Yeah, Thank man. you. Okay, but yeah, let's say uh, like what kind of stuff do you do? What are you into? Yeah, so uh, my name's Kalen. Uh, yeah, like Brand said, I'm I'm his coworker. Yeah, uh, we met through work, and uh, it was actually pretty interesting talking to Brand because I find that he. He has a lot of hobbies and passions to do side projects, just like myself. Um, I like I like to keep myself busy all the time, and right now I'm currently working on trying to work on a side hustle just to keep myself busy. And uh, along with that, I'm working on investments in uh, cryptocurrency and then weed. Getting that cash money. Yes, trying to make it big, man. Can't can't live off that salary for life. Cool. Yeah. So I guess let's just jump right into those things that are we're both passionate about now, which is I guess like some investing and and getting the side hustle going to get some get some of that uh multiple income (laughs) revenue streams yes yeah so what 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 do you have going on for like your investments or like how are you trying to make some money on the side and what are you hoping to do with it Mm -hmm. so in terms of investments uh i'm actually currently uh pretty much playing with all my money in weed uh so my biggest investments are currently in uh, the canadian marijuana market yeah, and um, for those of you who don't know, in case like I ever get an international audience, yeah. <laughs> this this coming summer, uh, Canada's legalizing weed across the whole country mm-hmm. for recreational use, mm-hmm. and right now there's like a few companies kind of gearing up to get ready for that. Yeah, and one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to jump on the weed train is uh, I really see it as a once in a lifetime opportunity where we're going to be entering into a time frame where a whole country is very supportive of of opening up a new market to something that was deemed to be taboo or yeah it was frowned upon yeah but yeah. now suddenly they're switching it all around and they're letting people use it med- um, not only medically but recreationally which is going to be big which is really huge and we have a once in a lifetime chance to get in a little earlier and hopefully these companies make it big and then we can make it big yeah or, or or we just like lose everything yeah, yeah. <laughs> in case people don't like it even though it's legal. but I, yeah. I feel like it really is leaning towards it's just going to be like a more broadly accepted thing mm-hmm. and the people who don't like it will just kind of tolerate it i guess yeah it's exactly like, they're, just going to be like smoking probably for the most part yeah yeah for sure there is going to be a period of time where people are still gonna look down upon it but i think over time once they realize that it's it's the norm and it's it's gonna only gonna go up from there yeah, and since we didn't say where we work or anything, we can we can safely talk about this. But yeah, <laughs> have have you dabbled in in the marijuana before? Uh, yes, I have actually. So okay. I I don't smoke it a lot. I've I've smoked it before, and I've done the the THC stuff before as well. Um, but I find that it's the edibles are the ones that really get you uh, insanely high. Like I've only done it once, but every that one time it was the the edible trumped smoking or the vaporizing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because even though it's like a different uh, like material altogether, it's mm-hmm. still like burning in your in your lungs and your throat and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. it's a lot more potent. I I personally think it's a it's a good thing, even though I I find that it even though we're gonna be legalizing it, mm. uh, there's still gonna be a lot of a drug dealer. Well, would they still be considered drug dealers? Well, like private sale of it, kind yeah. of thing. I guess, and in that scenario, it'd be more like they're bootlegging it, like for alcohol. Yeah. If I don't know, if like if like a sixteen year old wants to buy booze or something, they'll like get someone to like. Yeah, yeah. Let's just call but them hustlers. Know. They're gonna be hustlers. They're gonna go from drug dealers to hustlers. But then, is is there these hustlers are just gonna like sell to kids or what's your? 
Or they're uh, going to do their own and just sell it to whoever. Hmm. I don't know. Like, I think it really depends on whether or not the public companies can make it as good as oh, the, what the drug dealers can get uh, their supply from right now. Uh, f- fair enough, yeah. I guess, in that context. But like from, from hearing interviews and stuff from the companies who do like the medicinal things, it sounds like their product is like kind of a cut above mm-hmm. what's on the streets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah, and like uh, I know a couple people who have like the the medical license right now, yeah. so they can like order the medicinal marijuana, mm-hmm. and it sounds like they just get like like a really clean thing that yeah gives the benefits they need kind of thing yeah instead of like something that just like stinks so bad and mm-hmm. you don't know what's gonna happen mm-hmm. yeah to me I think the key to business is uh, ease of use or ease of uh, accessibility mm-hmm. so. If customers can find that getting one of those cards, or actually, do you even need a card when it goes? Well, when it's legal, I don't think you do. It's probably oh. just like an age limit or something. Okay. I don't think we have the full details, but it sounds like it's going to be regulated by like the, yeah. the same people who regulate alcohol everywhere. Because so. mm. if it's going to be as easy as just walking into the store and buying it, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be huge. Yeah. yeah it's going to let more people get into that space versus like, Asking a friend, and then the friend's like, "Here, uh, Texas sketchy number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's meet up somewhere. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can't stay parked here for more than forty-five seconds. Yes. I gotta go. <laughs> yes. Have have what about yourself, friend? Have you dabbled into the marijuana? Uh, I've tried it like a few times, but it's been quite a while since I've tried. I get, well, actually, no. The most recent time was I had my honeymoon in Jamaica. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and it's decriminalized there already. Oh okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you can't like. I don't think you can buy from stores or anything, but um, I think the the citizens are allowed to have like two to five plants or something of their oh, own. Oh, cool! Yeah, uh, oh. and then at our like hotel, like by the beach, uh, there's this like dude walking around. Oh yeah, <laughs> and then he's just like making sure the tourists are having a good time. Oh, and nice. like part of how he does that is like, you want some Jamaican uh, cigars, and I'm like, what's a Jamaican cigar? He's like, he's like, it's that Kush, man. <laughs> 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 yeah and then no, my wife awesome. and i just like each other i was like well we're here we may as well like try it see what yeah. the big deal is about oh, yeah, yeah yeah and i was actually like really nice it doesn't smell like um like you know when you walk by someone and they just like smell so bad mm-hmm. and it's just like it's almost like metallic or like mm-hmm. garbage mm-hmm. but there it wasn't it was like you just like pulled something fresh out of the oven it smells so nice yeah and it's so <laughs> smooth yeah and, awesome. and the guy like wanted 20 bucks and i was like well what's 20 bucks in the u.s and like he has this massive hand and he's like it would give you like this much, like the whole length of his hand. And I'm like, yo, we're here for like not even a week. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think we can even go through that. <coughs> so we gave him $10 and we got like the size of a finger. And it lasted us like like three separate days Holy spaced crap. out between the two of us. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, That's it was crazy. nice. That's awesome. Well, you know what? I'm actually really glad we're talking about this because I feel like it's a topic that more and more people should be talking about. That's true, just, yeah. Just to get away from the whole taboo that it's bad yeah especially like, yeah when it like comes out and exactly. then there i'm sure there's going to be like a huge chunk of people who don't still want to go near yeah, it exactly yeah. like even for myself uh, i'm not a recreational user or anything yeah, but yeah. i really don't have any negatives to say about it if you if you even read like a lot of the um like articles where it actually helps patients yeah. calm themselves like i think it's it's a great thing but for some reason, you know, society thinks it's a bad thing. So yeah, it's, I don't know. Uh, it's There's, strange. I don't know how it came about. You can well, like I've read some things on how it came about, but it almost sounds so okay. It's a, like it's like either so crazy mm-hmm. that it's a conspiracy, or like so crazy that it actually happened. Mm. And like I didn't live during that time because it was like however many decades ago, and then yeah, so you can't know. But the the theory that I've read was that. Um, I think back when I guess like a class struggle was more of like a huge issue than like racism is today. Yeah. So you have like I don't know, but just to put like an easy figure and analogy on it, like if you make under ten thousand dollars a year, there's like thousands of you, and you all hate everyone who like makes more than oh. like a hundred thousand a year, and everyone's united in that, and they're like oh. pushing for change, kind of thing, and like regardless of who yeah. you are, where you live, what your race is, and those people who made more money wanted uh like to deal with this problem because it was becoming a real problem and mm-hmm. how they did that was like okay there are certain like subgroups of this of this group who makes under ten thousand who really uh is like into marijuana okay. and those groups happen to be like okay like, hippies and like black people yeah. and whoever else 
And so they're like, okay, we're going to like make this drug illegal and come after them so we can create this divide and like weaken their power against us. Which uh, it sounds like either a conspiracy or like something that could actually happen, right? Slap a label on them. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're, they're like demonized now because like no, nothing changed in their behavior because mm-hmm. like say they've always had marijuana and like they've always been the same person. Yeah. But now it's illegal. So now we can go after them for something else and split up the, split up yeah. the power. You know, speaking of that kind of fear, uh, yeah. that's exactly uh, what's happening with cryptocurrencies right now as well. Oh, really? Yes. Um, the governments, a lot of governments are actually instilling fear onto the people, saying how crypto is, it's not regulated, right. it's uh, decentralized, and you need like a, a government body to control the currency. Yeah. And, but that's actually what crypto is trying to fight against, right? Yeah. They're yeah. trying to fight against that control and that's yeah. why crypto is is down right now it's because of the fear the fear mongling from the government bodies and just general and general public uh, the people of public they don't understand what it is and mm-hmm. they're scared that it's a scam it's a bubble you know all those fear mongling words yeah and that i guess it it the whole concept of crypto can be really scary as mm-hmm. well because it uses like a a new technology that like already a technology there's a a huge chunk of the population who like doesn't want it to like they won't even update their their mm-hmm. like iphone or their their android phone because they're like mm-hmm. it's gonna slow it down or like i don't know what's gonna happen or like what's happening with my privacy or whatever mm-hmm. if, if they're into that whole school of thought but with crypto it's like even more complex than that because you hear like blockchain you hear uh even like cryptography is like you may have heard it <laughs> in like your day to day if you're outside of the tech world, but I feel like it's that's highly unlikely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's kind of like a really foreign concept too, yeah. which can drive a lot of people into like the fear of the unknown. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? That's the that's the name of the game in investments. Yeah. The FUD. Have you heard of FUD? What's that? It's like fear. Oh shit! What is what did FUD stand for? Okay, I don't remember what FUD stands for, but it's it's uh, FUD is basically like it's like fear and it disrupts uh, an industry. Oh, okay. So FUD, yeah, and then FOMO. You know what FOMO is? Oh yeah, fear of missing out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the big two key the two key words there that drives the market and investments is fear. Yeah. You know, fear when it goes down, and yeah. fear of missing uh, missing out. Yeah. And that's essentially what investing is. You gotta just like Warren Buffett says, you gotta sell on. Uh, was it buy on fear, sell on news, sell on greed? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Like, perfect that you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. We didn't even plan this. <laughs> but I, I have also been listening to a podcast called, like, Rule One Investing, which I may have, like, brought up once or twice before to you, like, at work, but mm-hmm. never really explained it, nor on the show. So, I'll, like, like, basic summary is, like, the rule number one of investing is don't lose money. And then rule number two is don't forget rule number one. And apparently that's the rule that, like, Warren Buffett and, like, his investing partner, Charlie Munger, use. Yeah. And they kind of, like, the whole podcast goes into, okay, what does this mean? How do you invest with this mindset? And how do you, like, make it work for you? Oh, yeah. Regardless of, like, how much money you start with. And it's, like, so interesting. I've been listening to it, like, on my way to work and from work, like, for the last two, three weeks. Yeah. So it's really getting me, like, excited and inspired yeah, to get into the investing right, Let's game. get to it. Yeah. So, the and then... Way. Kind of like off that concept of like the rule one that Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger use is like their four basic principles, which is like, do you understand what you're about to invest in? Or are you at least capable of understanding it? Which in the case of cryptocurrency is going to drive a lot of people away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the second one is like, it has to have some kind of like durable competitive advantage with mm-hmm. the company so that like, you, you know, it's not going to like crash that easily. Exactly. So there's some stability. And then the third one is it's got to have like you would like it to have like talented and um, like smart management in place that's not going to like screw it up. Mm -hmm. So it like adds to the durability. And then the last thing is even if it's super awesome and like it's going to last forever and it's always going to go up, Mm -hmm. you have to buy it at a price that like makes sense. Mm -hmm. So like you buy it on sale, you're buying something amazing on sale and then you're guaranteed to make money. It's kind of like the whole philosophy. Gotta buy the dips. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. gotta become the dip lord. The, the dip <laughs> lord. That's what I call it. That's, that's what I'm trying to become, the dip lord. That sounds like a troll's like username on like a MMO RPG. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you were killed by dip lord. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Like, you gotta you gotta buy the dips. Yeah. Because you know what, people in real in life, people are always going to be greedy. And once it hits that high, it doesn't matter what kind of market it is, there's people that are gonna sell. 
yeah it's it's they they have the fear that yeah. like this is going to be the highest it's ever going to be so mm-hmm. i have to sell it now because exactly. yeah not even just fear but it's it's the greed it's the profit making yeah that's so true. so people want to take those profits and the scary part about those dips mm-hmm. is that if there's a lot of new money coming yeah. in, just like how it's been with weed, yeah, the new investors are gonna see that dip and they're gonna panic sell, and it causes momentum snowball effect, yeah, and it crashes right down, and that's exactly what happened to to weed. Oh, yeah. So if you look at weed, they're actually like last week it was actually down like forty percent. But when you say weed, that's like is that a collection of companies who are like gonna get into the production business, or like what what do you mean with weed? The whole weed market, the marijuana market. In Canada, in Canada. So like all the Canadian producers? All the Canadian licensed producers, yes. Oh, okay. If you look at their share prices, they actually all tanked Last 30, week. 40%. Really? From their all-time high. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's initially because, uh, so, so what happened was every company sort of hit its all-time high. Yeah. And for some reason, the whole entire, I think it's staged. Like there's no way this is, it can, it can go this coincidentally. Yeah, all of the top three, uh, all of the top uh, licensed producers mm-hmm. hit their all time high. Yeah, and then they instantly, every single one of them started uh, started dropping. Yeah, and it, it must have been staged or something because there's no way that everyone wanted to sell at the same time, and it just caused a giant snowball effect. So uh, the biggest ones that got hit were Aurora, AC, uh, Aurora, Afria, and Canopy. Right, they all hit their all time highs. And then it started to dip a little. Yeah. And then during the next week, for some reason, it just kept on dropping. Oh. And I think it's because the people with the, the biggest amount of money in the game yeah. they started taking their profits. Oh. And, and it, did you know that there's a, there's a lot of new money coming into the weed market? Yeah. Yeah. And I think what happened was people saw that sell, uh, like the big sales from the large investors, mm-hmm. and it just caused this... Um, sort of snowball because when you go all the way up mm-hmm. from like a certain point to the all time high, yeah, there's something that we call support levels okay. where people are bound to to hit a support level mm-hmm. and then start to buy back in again because they sort of think like it's it's a level of uh, how much that stock price is supposed to be valued at. Right. So like a good example is like let's say a stock price goes goes from eight to fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. So there's a seven dollar difference where there's no one really knowing what the price uh, levels should be yeah so so what i'm trying to say here is it started uh, tanking and there's no support levels in between right so people started to go past uh, the like he oh, kept on okay. going down and that's mainly because like it, it has such a short history you don't know exactly where those kind of like yeah i guess like equilibriums are going to be kind yeah. of yeah yeah exactly okay. so so the, that was one of the biggest issues. Like a lot of the new money mm-hmm. started selling as well, and it just caused a big panic because whenever there's new money, there's always going to be people that buy at the all-time high. Yeah, because they because they're fear because they're yeah, yeah. missing out. The thing is going to keep going. Exactly. Yeah. And once it starts, they start losing a lot of money. They're yeah. like, oh shit, it's going down, and they don't and have hard. that. They don't have that disconnection from their money to just keep on holding on. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the biggest things in an investment. You gotta just disconnect yourself from the money. Okay. I'm, I'm going to take one moment to disconnect myself from this podcast and get you a tissue because I oh. see like oh, right. water running. <laughs> Am I? Oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, sorry. No worries. It's, it's just like, I'm sure the camera doesn't see it, yeah. but I'm just like, I'm staring you right in the face and this it's like, a... this glistening eye is staring back yeah. at me. <laughs> it's embarrassing. But you know what? It brings us closer at least. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. you overcome some obstacles and then it builds that relationship even stronger. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what just happened. You guys just witnessed, if you're watching the video, uh, a moment of of bonding. Yes, a friendship building. <laughs> yeah. So, oh yeah. Um, I guess we're we're still on the topic of of passions, and then I find that like week over week, I'm thinking more and more about this podcast and like what yeah. I want to do with it, how I'm gonna build it, how it's gonna make make me all the nickels. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Uh, on on YouTube, the last video, it was like the last two videos on YouTube, it was with the talking piece and the music piece all in one video. Yeah. And then I noticed after I uploaded it and checked the statistics and everything, it told me something like, you uh, can't sign this video up for ads because there's like copyrighted music in it. Oh. And I'm like, well, okay, well, fair enough, I guess. Even though I'm just, I'm mixing it, I'm not posting a, a, a song directly or using it as like the background music for something mm-hmm. stupid. Yeah. It's like, 
I'm, I'm doing DJ stuff, which is what DJs aren't going to produce all their own music and then mix it for you unless you're yeah. super like big already or, or like I guess you're really talented like Zed, Dead Mouse, all the big name DJs who do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not like that. But so what I'm going to do is just to get around that obstacle is just post the talking video separately, cut it, and then post a separate music uh, only video with me mixing it. So that at least I can sign up one video for ads if, yeah. if the topics are hot like they are right now with the weed <laughs> and the crypto. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm kind of getting a clearer picture on what to do with that, which is, nice. which is coming together nicely. Yeah. Um, I also have to take my phone number off one of the podcasting platforms. I accidentally put it there because oh, I man. thought it was required. Yeah. I'm going to text you so much. Yeah. So if you are uh, listening to this one before you've listened to any um of my older ones you'll probably won't see the phone number um but if you have listened to the older ones and you're super creeper <laughs> you, yeah. you may have my phone number already <laughs> nice yeah so i just wanted to to mention that to see uh, i guess like give people an idea of where i'm heading with the podcast and what, what the goal is uh and then another thing we were talking about earlier this week is like like our ambitions mm-hmm. outside of work and stuff mm-hmm. and i mentioned that one ambition is like a huge problem I see with, I don't know, so many people or so many places in the world having is essentially miscommunication with what is fact and what is opinion or like how you would get a certain opinion based on certain facts that you choose to look at. Yeah. And I think it causes a lot of conflict and then just, just endless problems. And that, that's like a huge problem in itself. That mm-hmm. how, how can you even solve that? How can one person come up with a way to solve that? And then my little idea for that problem was just having a platform such as a podcast where yeah. you can kind of hash a lot of those things out. Um, essentially like an anti-pundit on something, yeah. which I, don't, I, I didn't look up the definition for a pundit, which is probably not mm-hmm. adding to my street cred right now. But to me, a pundit is someone who just like makes their opinion aggressively on something yeah. uh, and maybe they have like a few reasons for it. Um, But mine will be kind of to kind of take out the opinion and then present like neutral information, but as interestingly as possible. Yeah. Um, And maybe assess people's opinions who seem like real rooted in a lot of like false things. That's you know what? That's actually really good, man, because I'm glad you're actually doing something towards your ambitions. Yeah. Um, Because just like from from what from what my mentor Gary Vee says. You know, a lot of people say they want to do things and mm. they have these big ass ambitions. But the one thing that he always asks people is, do your actions match your ambitions? Yeah. And, and I'm actually really happy that you're doing this podcast because it's showing that you want to progressively move towards reaching your goals and yeah. hitting those ambitions. Yeah. Whereas like I see a lot of my friends, they're like, oh, I want to do this. You know, I want to make more money. I want to start this, start that. And then you know what? They go home and they just fucking... Sp- Freaking sit at home and do nothing. Yeah, and that's just wasting your time. You're not your actions don't match your ambitions, and that's when it really pisses me off when they have all these crazy goals but they don't do anything yeah. to reach them. Yeah, and like, well, to be fair, that was me for like the last two years. Like, with um, I did three podcast episodes two years ago. Yeah, and then I just I was like, oh, this is fun. I want to do more, and then I just didn't touch it for two more years. Yeah. And then finally, I'm just like, you know, what? I keep talking about wanting to do it. I'm just going to just do it. Just do it. Because sometimes you get so busy with like the this and that's of day to day life. And yeah. then you don't even like that's not even at the front of your mind like yeah. after so long. And after years and years of this, it's like so far back, you, you know that it exists. And then but you don't know how to bring it back. Exactly. Yeah. But, so you, but it, get there. you also need that like inner fire in you, though. You know, like, uh, yeah. you need to have that passion to do what you want to do. Yeah. And uh, you got to like truly believe it in your head that yeah. you, you can do it. That's a hard, the biggest thing. Yeah. A, a big part of that, which is like super hard, is knowing what that is too. Yes. Yeah. That's the hardest part. You can say like so many generic things. You're like, okay, I want, I want world peace. I want to solve world hunger <laughs> and then blah, blah, blah. Uh, but yeah, it, this is, how important is that to like you personally? And I think it's not selfish to put you at the forefront of what you want to achieve. Mm hmm. Which is, I think, what might be stopping some people. I don't know. I've never really asked anyone about that. Maybe I should. Are you at the forefront of your, of your personal goals? Mm, you know what? I, I, I want to say that I am. Yeah. Um, you know, I hold myself 
very highly to every action that I do. Mm. And, you know, I think the biggest thing that really pushes me forward is there's a lot of people that say you can't do it. Or like they think that you're not going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest and the best feelings is just one day when you just show up and they ask you like, hey, what the hell what happened? Like, how did you suddenly get here? Yeah, yeah. And you say, you know what? I, I just wanted to prove everyone that I could do it. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's, it's always good to be an underdog, but when you put yourself on the pedestal and you're letting people like take jabs at your securities and your, um, I guess your confidence. Yeah. And you need to find a way to really back everything else, mm -hmm. uh, back yourself up or else yeah. they're just going to keep on talking about you. Tear and, you apart. Exactly. And they're going to be able to like confirm that you're nothing more than just a loser. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's the biggest thing for myself. And I think you, you never really are truly a loser or whatever else they call you mm -hmm. until you like start believing that yourself. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You're like, oh, everyone's calling me a loser. I guess I'm a loser. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's, that's also like success though. You know, you're not truly successful until you really believe it inside your head yeah. that you're going to be able to make it. Yeah, exactly. And for me, I feel like there's, I can't say I'm super successful mm -hmm. like at today but i feel like that's a place i want to get to mm -hmm. and then like day by day like slowly step by step it's gonna build and then eventually i'll get there and that's what i believe yeah in my head for myself so just gonna just bunker down and do the work yeah just bunker down and do the work yeah that's how i see it is it bunker or hunker i think you can use either is hunker even a word i think it's bunker Bun you're bunker like, makes the most sense yeah because you're like bunkering down yeah. inside your little and shelter. then and then everyone's like shots firing at you yeah just like deflect off the bunker yeah exactly or okay. like in starcraft you just like repair yeah you know? like, <laughs> get that oh send man. your scvs to scv repair. yeah i couldn't remember the acronym i feel so ashamed <laughs> did you play starcraft before i yeah, did, did right? yeah I, it's been so i think it's, it's been definitely more than like a couple of years yeah. i think than that, that i really like played it much I remember because we were talking about uh, DBZ Sega, Sega. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z right. Sega is like a special custom map in Star oh, Wars. Yeah. Or, not Star Wars. No, oh, Starcraft. I'm Dude. failing so hard in Starcraft. <laughs> Shame, man. Yeah. Shame. Okay, just ignore everything I said for like the past <laughs> two minutes. Uh, yeah, I'm ashamed. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm playing an actual a Dragon Ball game now. Just like the, the new Dragon Ball game that came out for oh, PlayStation 4. Um, like Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Fighter Z. Yeah. yeah. It started so easy. And then I'm like, okay, I can just like keep shooting blasts at this guy and I'm going <laughs> to win. I uh, just like button spam one thing and yeah, I keep yeah. winning. But now it's like, it's so hard, man. I don't know. Like, how do you, when you're pro, like, we're in the, well, I don't, are you, are you, you're not really in the field of like software. Or... No. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm in the field of like software development and thinking of like, how do you even program like the AI, like the computer to be like that crazy? Mm -hmm. You would have to like, just feed it like this list of combos and stuff because yeah. i'm like i can't do anything this guy's juggling me like a like a colored oh yeah like ball <laughs> yeah i can't come back oh that's a, that's a that's a good question actually i've always was interested on in how you develop ai like yeah like starcraft like even in like um computer games mm. like in cs or starcraft or whatever how do you give the the commands to the computer to do certain tasks based on what the other person does yeah it's like is that concerned machine learning i don't well back like before I, I i like never even heard of the concept of machine learning either because i would just never like listen for it or maybe yeah. it wasn't a thing because i feel like machine learning is pretty like commonplace now yeah which i'm, I'm sure they do for a lot of like ai yeah. because machine learning is essentially like you feed in just tons and tons of data to a computer mm -hmm. and then you say like uh like for i had one project back in school where we had to use um like kind of a really crude version of uh, machine learning to yeah. find like it, it basically fed in like thousands of pictures of like this one scene by like a railroad mm -hmm. and the project was like okay we have to find out of all these pictures uh like there's a problem that like bears are kind of like getting onto the railroad yeah uh, and they want to find like pictures that are all time stamped and like we want to know like the common times that bears like cross the railroad oh okay yeah so we had to feed like tons and tons of pictures of this railroad mm -hmm. uh to like our program and then mark ones that do have bears in them and be like okay this is what you watch out for to know that there's a bear in the photo kind of thing oh, so okay. after like looking at thousands of photos and knowing which ones uh have bears in them it kind of like starts to uh like form its own logic for what to look for to determine oh. whether or not there's a bear and I think that's 
basically like the 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 premise of machine learning for I don't know a lot of things. I guess is that say. AI though? Is that how no, they that's really is? not necessary? Well, I, I guess you you could argue it either way. It's not really AI. Like it's not going to do anything aside from that one specific thing that we assigned it to do. Yeah. But I think as you introduce more and more of those things, yeah, and like give it definitions for like more abstract concepts, mm-hmm. like uh, like you're gonna walk up this. Or no, well, that's like more of a robotics thing, I guess. For AI, I'm not really sure. Mm. Like, it's it's a whole field in itself. But like the way I'd see it is, you basically just like tons and tons and tons of these different scenarios, yeah. and then it forms its own way of how uh, how to deal with the scenarios. Yeah. So I guess that could be how they do the AI in the video games. I've hmm. interesting. I, I do know a guy who works at Bioware in Edmonton. Yeah. Like a, a game company that's. Uh, bought out by Electronic Arts a few years ago, but they're pretty good. Um, I don't know what he does exactly, but maybe I can ask him next time. Hopefully not the janitor. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think he's the janitor. He's like he he's he looks he has like that kind of like I don't want to be mean, but like nerdy demeanor. Oh yeah, it's like this guy's not a janitor. He like knows his oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's funny because like I know this guy from the Korean class I go to. Yeah, which is like um. It's like a weekly free Korean class at the U of A. Yeah. They have a few other languages too, but yeah. Um, he was, there was some other guy in the class and like anyone can attend these things. It's free. You don't have to be a student. So there's people from like all walks of life there. Mm-hmm. This one guy was like a speech pathologist or something. Mm-hmm. And then he's asking like this guy who works at Bioware, uh, what was he asking him? He's like, what is the difference between like code and data? And then like, okay, that's the, it, easy enough to understand. Like my explanation of what the difference between code and data would be like, Code is kind of the logic behind everything. It's the brains. And then data is like what you feed into it. Mm -hmm. And then the code does something with the data. And that something can be pretty much anything. It can keep the data there. It can give you something new. It can throw it back to you, whatever you want to do. So the code is the function. The data is just like the information that gets fed into it. Mm -hmm. Um, Which is, I think, I don't know. I think it's easy enough to understand, like pretty commonplace. But then this guy went into like really technical details to like a non-technical person. I'm like, yeah. He definitely knows his stuff, but he just like doesn't know how to translate it in like normal interesting conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, interesting. So that's how I know he knows his stuff. Yeah. Well, in the end, AI's the computer games are, are pretty tough, especially like those fighter games. Have you have you played uh, Naruto Shippuden Storm? Ninja oh Storm? yeah, yeah, yeah. I played the old ones like on PS2, oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I know the newer ones too. Yeah. Oh man, like. I like those fighter games because it's, it's kind of cool because you actually get to, like, you know, do those special moves that the yeah. character does. Yeah. But, like, to me, I find those games, it gets really repetitive during the mid game, mid to end game. Mm. It's like, holy cow, I just, I'm just doing the same combos. Yeah. And I was like, there's only one way to win, is that the, and it's to beat the other guy up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And That's it gets true. really hard, too. Like, you actually have to start learning all the combos and. Yeah, and, and stuff like, just the timing beat. and everything. Yeah. Like, holy crap. If, if they're, like, coming you nonstop. Yeah. And then. You can't do anything unless you like time something perfectly to like get away or counter it or something. Yeah, we're just, getting really deep into fighting video games right now. <laughs> I just wanna, I just wanna like spirit bomb someone. Yeah, like, call it a day. It's like, you know, like you get some energy. <laughs> that, that's like even more boring though. Than, like you just keep launching a combo. Like, this one's like you just launch one attack and then it's done. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's the fighter version of the get rich quick scheme. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, but speaking of that, like, going, I guess like we spent. A long time on passions, I guess. With like <laughs> projects has kind of been mixed in. Uh, yes, let's, let's yeah, let's it's, continue it's on. All, like the hybrid, yeah. So if I can go back to um, like investing and stuff. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anyone watching this because I, I thought investing was so boring before, but now that I'm getting into it and learning, it's like it's just like I have dreams about it. It's so exciting. Yeah. Man. yeah. So I don't know. S- sorry if you're not that into it and you're listening to this, but it's. It's really cool once you start learning like more about it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's the thing is, uh, I think in general the public they don't really understand what investing is. Yeah. And I feel like it's not until you click yourself in the mindset that you need to make more money, and the only way to really have the lifestyle that you want yeah. is to gain uh, financial freedom. Yeah. That's when you finally click in and it's like, you know what, I need to take my money and not buy stupid stuff with it yeah and make I need, it work for you exactly you need yeah. to take that money and start letting it roll for itself mm-hmm. and make more money for you yeah 
But it's not until that individual understands that concept, yeah. they'll never find this kind of stuff interesting. Okay, so if anyone doesn't understand this concept and you're listening right now, let's change your life. Yeah. Okay? You can do whatever you want. Yeah. You can save up your money. But that's always just going to sit there. And you'll always have to work for it. Exactly. Do you want to retire? Okay, you're going to save up and put something in your RRSP mm-hmm. or, or whatever account is relevant to where you are that's saving for retirement. Mm-hmm. And the uh, kind of like interest on that is probably going to be like around inflation. So you're n- not really gaining anything. Yeah, it's yeah. just going to be like, okay, I put a thousand today away and I put a thousand, I don't know, every so often. And then by the time I retire, you only have the money that you set aside. Like it's just, even though it gains slight interest, mm-hmm. the value, like what you can do with it is the same that you could have done with it at the time you saved it away. It didn't do anything for you. It just sat there. Mm -hmm. And now you can use it. But all you've done essentially is you've just cut out a chunk of your earnings and like set it to the side. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to like use those earnings. And if you run out, you have to work again. Oh shit, what do you do? Maybe there's some government support like with pensions and and whatnot, but that's quite minimal too. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that's kind of like a sad thing to realize. If you're, say you're like a grandparent one day and you can't even like spoil your grandkids. Yeah. Because you don't have that, that cheddar. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, one of the things that really like pushed me over the edge to yeah. get started on this is I was just, it's kind of, it's kind of dark, but if you really think about it, just listen in. Yeah. One day when something happens to your loved ones mm-hmm. and you need that money, mm-hmm. like what are you going to do to get it? Like, are you just going to let that person either die from sickness because you can't pay for a bill. Yeah. Like, I, I relate this back to, like, my parents because I, I love my parents so much. Yeah. I'm just thinking, like, one day, if they ever need, like, a medical bill that needs to be paid yeah. and I can't pay for it mm-hmm. and I'm just going to let them die, mm-hmm. that's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Yeah, because I guess in a way you can easily say that, oh, it's, it's my fault that I didn't have the money to pay for their bill and help them out mm-hmm. when, like, they, they provided for me growing up and exactly. whatever. But also, on the other hand, it's like if you if you were never given kind of like the tools or the education to be able to save up and mm-hmm. like make your money work for you, then it's not you can't really blame yourself for it mm-hmm. uh, at that point. I guess like you're being really hard on yourself if you are. But it's yeah. even in that like we don't blame and say like it's your fault. Your parents it's, are sick and yeah. you can't afford their bills. Yeah. Well, but, it's it's not so much the blame. It's have you done everything that you can do to help your loved ones? Yeah, and that's that, how I find yeah. that's the biggest thing uh, to me about money. Yeah. Have I do I have enough in case I need to like help out my loved one? Oh, that's like, that's really good. Right? Like yeah. if you ever think about it, like you, yeah, you shouldn't blame yourself saying that oh, it's it's no, it's my fault that I couldn't save them or I didn't can come up with the cash. It's yeah. the it's more of like the mindset of do I have the ability to ever help the people that I love in, yeah. in case they need it? Oh, that's a really and good point. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you don't have financial freedom, oh, sorry. No worries, and good. if you don't have the money that, uh, that you want, yeah. then you know what? One day, if you truly love that individual mm-hmm. and you couldn't like help them out yeah. because of like money, because money is evil, but money can also do a lot of things for you. Yeah. And if you don't have that kind of cash flow to help someone out, I, like, yes, you can't blame yourself, but it's always going to eat, your, uh, like, eat yourself alive. Yeah. It's always going to be haunting you. It's like, oh man, you know what? I, I lost my my parents and it, it, whether it be because I couldn't help them pay for something mm-hmm. and where, where they like gave me everything for, for like my lifestyle. Yeah. So that's how I see it. I, I want to do that. Plus I want to, uh, I don't want to trade my time for money anymore. Yeah. It's a, it's a concept that a lot of like financial freedom people, they, they explain mm-hmm. is that you shouldn't be trading your eight hours a day for X amount of dollars. Mm-hmm. Instead you should be trading your eight hours a day to gain value so that you can use that value to make money. Right. So like a good example of that is like if you're the CEO of a company, mm-hmm. you don't make hourly anymore. Yeah. Instead, you trade your eight hours to bring value to a company yeah. so that you can get a big paycheck and then you get a cut of whatever that big paycheck is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's and that's what point. we got to slowly move away from. And that's like why investment is, is so cool because you can trade anywhere in the world mm-hmm. and you can... The, the amount that you make is really up to, to you and how you time yourself and the positions that you put yourself on the market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one thing that kind of like uh, uh, to touch on those people who talk about financial freedom. Mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of like Robert Kiyosaki, the rich dad, yes. poor dad guy. Yes. Uh, and then another thing is like 
like you know MLMs, like the multi-level marketing, yes. like network marketing. A like lot. Yeah, I find a lot of those kind of work off that concept and almost like like make up, come up like with their own almost like perverse reasons. Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, this is the concept, and we're gonna go this way with it, even though it's not really helping you get there. It's mm-hmm. helping the people. Like, it's basically like, okay, I've. I know that I want to get there, so I'm going to make my own MLM mm-hmm. and then convince people they can get there too. Yes. But is it's just another, it's like a more diluted pyramid scheme with yes. more legalities to it. Um, uh, yeah, so the problem with those MLMs and the problem with like companies like Amway and is World Financial Group one? I think it is, yeah. yeah. The like problem with that, yeah. with those kind of companies is they sell you on a belief system. Yeah. So they sell you on the idea like, oh, you're going to be your own boss. Yeah. You're going to have enough money to retire. Yeah. But their, their whole entire structure, it's so broken. Yeah. Like you don't, you aren't really your own boss. You're really selling the idea to other people so that they can help you sell that idea to other people. Yeah. And to be fair that there are like, uh, I do know people who kind of like have the drive to do it and they are doing well mm-hmm. on kind of like their own way. But at the same, and like they can have their good reasons for it and they can be good people, but mm-hmm. like you know that not, there's only so many people like you. Mm-hmm, exactly. and, and the way that it ideally succeeds is like everyone is like you and in, in, in like your team basically. Mm-hmm. But that's not going to happen. You're going to find people who are like way lazier, way more unmotivated. Exactly. So they've given you this money and then they're not really doing anything with it. And you can say, okay, well, it's not really my fault because I gave them what they needed. Mm-hmm. But like essentially at the end of the day it's like okay, they they basically paid and made you some money and mm-hmm. they're not doing anything with it they're not helping themselves um, well the, the other thing is have you heard about have you like gotten into an amway sort of uh, scam yeah well yeah. Okay, i actually did get roped into um the one the worst one was like one called fhtm Oh, what's I don't that? know. It's like it stands for Fortune High Tech Marketing. Oh, okay. Yeah, and this was like quite a few years ago. I think they're like no longer even a company anymore. Yeah. Yeah, but my old class. This I feel like this how it always starts. There's someone you haven't talked to in quite a while. Oh yeah. And then you you know who they are, but you don't you never really knew them that well. Yeah. And they come back to you after a few years, like, hey, just wanted to catch up and like. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then it's like. And they finally talk to you and they're like, yeah. hey, you're smart, right? Like, aren't yeah. you smart? This yeah. is a smart idea. Yeah. Give me two hundred dollars. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So funny story. I actually almost got roped into Amway as well. Yeah. Um, because I was working at Rogers at the time as like a sales representative. Okay. And some customer came in and like she started like praising me. She's like, "Oh, you're such a good individual. You, you know, you're really like outgoing and you talk um with enthusiasm." Like, yeah. And then it's like, I want to help you ease into like starting your own business. Okay. And, you know, yeah, and then you know what? As a young guy, I'm like, yeah, starting my own business sounds yeah. good. So I joined those like seminars or webinars or whatever. Yeah. And then it starts to all come clear to me, like, oh, you know what? This is really stupid. They sell you on the idea of yeah. financial freedom mm-hmm. and to get to places where you want to be. And then at the end, they're like, okay, initiation fee is uh, two hundred dollars, and we're expected you to help preach this idea to other people so yeah. that they can help join the club. And then what's worst about it is. They give you a storefront mm. to sell products mm-hmm. as a legitimate business. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. It's, it's really, really bad because it's, it like, entices people to come in and have that kind of belief system. Like, oh, I'm actually going to recruit people yeah. to believe in like this. Yeah. But they're not really building a legitimate business. Yeah. And that's what I want. I either want to make it big in investments or yeah. I build a legitimate business yeah. where I employ people and I actually help others uh, while also making an income for myself. Yeah, and I think that's the hard part is like those companies pretty much like play to that tune where it's like, well, I'm giving you the tools to do that. But really, you're kind of just like, you're just like adding another arm to someone else's business and calling that your arm. Yeah, Um, because people forget that the one person that you recruit, not just helping the person above. Yeah, it's also also above. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Um, But one concept that they do bring up from like, the rich dad poor dad thing like i remember this exactly in amway is like they have this i don't know if they they show this to you too but there's like this grid this like two by two grid mm-hmm. uh, and then there's like i forget exactly what the the, the labels were mm-hmm. but each square was like okay this one half is kind of like you're working for the money mm-hmm. and that's being like you're working for someone else or you have a small business kind oh, of thing. You have seen that yeah, yeah exactly and then the other one is like you're not working for money like you're basically making your money work for you or yeah. people working for you yeah and one is like big business, which essentially you're the CEO. And that's kind of 
the target that they're trying to sell it to you mm. is like you're going to be the ceo of your own yes. company basically thing so exactly. yeah you put in some work and then it all comes back to you mm -hmm. and then that four square was like investments which is making your money work for you but they don't even talk about that because and i think uh if i remember like from a few of these conversations or like from the videos it's like they, they want to kind of just sweep that part under the yeah. rug they're like yeah. Oh, that's complicated. Like, you'll never understand that anyway. So let's focus on the big business yes, thing. Yes. But I'm like, well, I want to learn about the investment. So, yeah. and I always felt that way whenever I see it. And, and it's kind of like always been like this interest at the back of my yeah. mind. And now like listening to and like starting to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not as complex as they say it is. Like, if you have oh. the interest, uh, you don't have to even like worry about there's all these formulas and stuff. You can just know the concepts and then mm -hmm. like kind of get more into it and get the practice from there. Yeah. And that's really like, at that point you you like have total control over the money that you're managing and exactly. what you're doing with it which that's is why really nice. that's why investments is key gotta get in on it yeah yeah I, I did start an investor account this week nice, uh, nice. yeah i think it's gonna be approved like early next week it takes two business days or something mm. yeah so yeah i'll get started with that and see where it goes you're gonna you're gonna yeah. yellow all in or what no not not what? everything well because i think that's if I'm just learning, I'm not gonna put like my my entire like ass on the line. Yeah, I'll put one cheek on the line. <laughs> so yeah. if I lose, it's like I'm not losing everything, but at least like yeah. if I win, it's substantial enough to like feel a difference, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, so how I see it uh, for yourself is: have you have you ever done those practice accounts? No, I heard of them. Okay, so, I I would actually recommend you don't do those practice accounts. Oh, really? Yeah. And the reason for that is because. Once you're given like a digital number yeah. and a practice account, you could care less what happens to it. Fair you enough. can lose whatever. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. But when you're putting like real hard assets, money on the line, yeah. you actually care. And that's when you, that's when you like do good things with it. Yeah. Cause I was, I did hear about those, but I was thinking like, okay, I'm going to be so choked if I like do so well. Yeah. And like, I could have like oh, yeah, that's true. doubled my money with all these practice things. But I'm like, how about I just put like money that I can... I guess uncomfortably spare, but like not so uncomfortable that I'm totally screwed if I lose it all. Mm. Uh, at least then I can like actually like have some real gains or like yeah. real, I won't call them real losses, I'll call them real learnings yes. in that case. Because if you're emotionally attached and it sucks, at least you have like more of a motivation to be like, okay, what really happened here? Exactly. Uh, we are kind of getting short on time though, so maybe let's just kind of switch it to the, to, um, the, the songs that we've chosen for, for, oh, okay. for this episode. Man, it was just getting good, too. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll need to, to do a part two yes, of we'll this do one. Part two. Yeah, too passionate about this one. Yeah. <laughs> but just to keep in the, in the same format of the Passions Project playlist, we're going to shift into playlists now. So what That's three amazing. songs have you chosen for us today? All right, so I, I'm a big old school trans guy, so I, I chose a track that I played a lot when I was a younger kid. Well, you know what? Am I? Can I be considered a younger kid? I'm only 23. Okay, I think the, right? <laughs> the definition has kind of changed. Yeah, right. Like before, well, I don't know if that's because we were just younger and we're like, oh, if you're in your 20s, you're like a, a big boy kind of thing. Yeah. But now it's like people in their 20s are still living at home. Like some are yeah. still in school and stuff. So yeah, I think you can be considered considered a kid still. Yeah. So yeah. a younger version of. My kid self. Then. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Don't even get started on a living at home, man. I have yeah. so much to say about freaking kids we'll, can't. We'll have to do a is. part two. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to. Okay. Okay, but yeah. So uh, I'm an old uh, school trans guy. So I chose a song that I used to play a lot. Uh, it's it's called uh, Let There Be Sky. Uh, it's it's by Rank One, and it's a mashup of uh, his song and John O'Callaghan's song. It's really good. Um, I, I enjoy it. You can do the special mixes. Yeah. And then uh, second song that I chose is Yellow Claw, Rose Horizon. It's, uh, it's fairly new. It's, uh, it's sort of like a hype song. Keeps me, keeps me going in the day. And my last song was Fractures by Elenium. It's, it's just a good old classic from, from an up-and-coming DJ. Cool. Yeah. That'll be, and that'll be really fun to mix because the BPMs are kind of all over the place. Yeah. Uh, with my three that I'm going to throw in is, um, I think I'm going to keep it pretty steady with like at least one K-pop track every yeah. time <laughs> just to, yeah, because it, it's, it's fun. I like it. The, so my K-pop track for today is by a group called four minute. It's yeah. like four ladies, I guess like, uh, they're probably, I can't call them. They're not like in their thirties, forties, I'm pretty sure. So four women, uh, and there's like two like kind of soft singers and then like two like really hard rappers okay so you kind of like you'll see both elements in the song and it's like it's really cool 
Um, and then another one is Now or Never featuring Phoebe Ryan, the Esteva and Juventa remix uh, by Tritonal. And oh, it's like now old, or never. old school, yeah, old school prog house yes. that we haven't heard from in forever. And then another kind of like electro banger that I like to go with that is called Hoo Ha by Fox Stevenson and Kirby. I talked about this in like my second podcast episode, so it's an older track, but I just, I love it so much, I'm going to play it again. Let's do it. Okay. I, like, I like the tritonal track. That's a good choice. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so we'll mix that down. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in a separate video because I can't, I can't make my, my five cents <laughs> off this video if I have the mix in, so it'll be separate. If you're listening to the podcast, just wait a couple seconds and it's going to be included because, yeah, that's you just know, how it works. <laughs> five cents can't even get you a 7-Eleven candy anywhere. Yeah, but if I make 5,000 episodes, oh, think of all those five cents. <laughs> yes, yeah. That so, uh, yeah, from listening to more podcasts, I feel like I should have like a formal closing to the podcast section yeah. and be like, what, what am I on now? I'm on SoundCloud, so follow me on SoundCloud. Please yeah. heart the, heart, heart the uh, track. Um, share it. Re- retweet it if you're on Twitter. I'm also on Twitter. My name on everything is just Beat on Bits. Um, beat on Bits. I also, I bought BeatOnBits.com and put like a simple landing page there just for fun. Nice. Um, Going big. Yeah. I'm on iTunes. <laughs> you can leave a review on iTunes if you're listening to this on iTunes. Uh, also on Stitcher and TuneIn, which are two other podcast platforms. So leave reviews. Subscribe to the list. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. Like the video. Put a comment. Good or bad. I don't care. Just get me. Get me up that list. <laughs> let's just let's build it, man. You gotta yeah. build your empire. All right. That's what so we gotta do. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. See ya.